What is going on, everyone? We are here with another Spotlight interview series hosted by yours truly, ACK. Um, today, I got another exciting artist on here, um, Bryce Malden. Bryce, what's going on, man? How are you? Doing good, man. How about yourself? And not too bad. I think I was just telling you about the snow that we've been having up here this winter. It's been it's been a hell of a winter so far. Uh, I can only imagine. It was 35 degrees here in Nashville, and that was it was miserable for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's crazy. 30, I'd love 35 degrees right now. That would be lovely. But- um, kind of before we hop into the interview, just for people that don't kind of know just who you are, like just as in general, as a person, doesn't even have to be about music, just kind of what you're doing right now and just where you're at. Yeah, man. Uh, I come from a little town in Florida called Webster, uh, centrally located and moved to Nashville about five years ago. And, uh, I sing and write country music and, uh, I'm just a fully independent artist trying to make it. That's awesome, man. I mean, that's just the dream. I mean, I only started this whole thing. I mean, songwriting, I started back in 2018, but then just even the um, interview series, I only started back in 2020 during COVID because there was nothing else to do. And I never thought this would actually turn out the way it has. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's crazy how fast this thing's gone. And just most recently I've interviewed uh, Brandon Davis. Um, shout out to him. Just had a great time talking to him and he's going on tour with Tim McGraw soon. So yeah. it's been that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's been a crazy journey. Um, but kind of getting into the first question is I always start with the basic of basics and everyone knows that is where did music start for you? How did singing come about just playing stuff? And just how did you get into the whole music scene? Yeah, it. Uh, I kind of have a, had a different path in music. I, uh, I raced motocross my whole life since I was four years old and uh, never played guitar or sang until I was about 18 years old. And uh my dad always played around the campfire, you know, around friends at the hunt camp and all that good stuff. And uh, it never strikes me to want to play guitar. You know, I took a lesson when I was like 12, learned a couple chords from my pastor and then never tried it again. But uh, my last few years of high school, I was homeschooled to travel around and race motocross uh, on a national level. And uh, I had to take a guitar class for an elective and learn how to play guitar tried singing when my parents leave the house I didn't want anyone to hear me I would try and try and sing and sounded good to me but I didn't know like hey maybe I'm tone deaf or something like (laughs) so I uh one day I made a video uh and I remember it was Die a Half Man by Thomas Rhett and uh I showed my mom and I was like hey like is this good and she was uh surprised and, and loved it and She started crying, you know, moms, but, and I was like, all right, so I'll post it. First video kind of took off and, uh, on Twitter and all that. Then I continued posting videos on Facebook and all, all over social media and, uh, just got really lucky and went viral a lot on Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. And just started getting a following and I never planned on moving to Nashville, but, um, just had people reaching out. I was like, all right, I can do this for fun, but I was like, all right, actually like, it became my passion. I was like, man, I don't, motocross was hard. <laughs> music was was really fun. So, yeah, I switched over to music and uh, been chasing it ever since. No, that's awesome, man. I mean, it's just always cool to hear people's upcoming in music and how they came about just because like kind of same for me is only back in 2018 is when I really started this whole thing um, with songwriting. I wrote the song about my grandfather passing away that a lot of people have heard in that's just, it's crazy to me because that's only four or five years ago. And I just never thought anything would come out of it. But now here I am talking to all these different artists, talking to you and just making these connections in the music business, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about is just making those connections. That it is. Yeah. Sorry to hear about about your grandpa. No, of course. No, I always appreciate that. Um, I mean, everyone knows is I grew up on that nineties, early two thousands country with, uh, Travis trick, Garth Brooks. Um, maybe I could just go, I could go on and on and list plenty of them. Same here. Um, but that kind of leads into the next question is who are some of your inspirations? Like when it comes to like making your music and stuff, who do you (laughs) really look up to in the music business and just what kind of really drives you just to make the music? Yeah, you know, same same people that you said, you know, my dad listened to Travis Trick, Gary Allen, all those people. And that was a big influence, you know, on my, I guess, my childhood, listening to that stuff. And then once I got into it, started singing, Jason Aldean really struck my ear. And I grew up just, I mean, jamming to that stuff back in high school, going out to the river and fishing and all that stuff. I mean, Jason Aldean, Kenny Chesney, Blake Shelton, all those guys. And 
as I've been in the industry, you know, a lot more people have influenced me and uh, ch- country music is changing every year. So it's a, uh, I love, I love the roots of nineties and early two thousands music, like country music. You'll never beat that. But yeah, those guys were a lot of big, like a lot of influence on, you know, Jason had that rock country sound. Yeah. I still love, like, I love the old nineties. I love the old Jason. I love the new J I, I love just, there's so many influence I've had over the years that kind of, I guess, mix into my music. Exactly. No. And I mean, I'm on the same boat as you. I feel like we definitely have a lot of the same um, people that we look up to, especially Jason Aldean back when he was first releasing some stuff. I used to jam to all that stuff too, back in oh, the right. day. Um, it just, the thing about country music and songwriting is the storytelling aspect behind everything um, is just yeah. really what drives me um, to be a songwriter is to tell that story. And at the end of the day, if I can write something that's going to help someone else down the road and that can relate to that, that's what really gets me. And that's what motivates me as a songwriter. Yeah. Um, so kind of getting into the third question is always talking about the creative process when it comes to songwriting, because it's different for so many artists. It doesn't even matter if you're in country music, if you're in rap, if you're in pop, like just the creative process when it comes to really creating this whole thing is just really unique. And I always have to shout out Garrett Walker. He was on the um, interview series. Y'all go check him out. His song Double Shot is just such a great tune. Um, he said it's like a puzzle when it comes to the creative process and writing a song whether you have 500 or a thousand pieces, you have it all laid out, scrambled. You don't know where it's going. Eventually you start putting those pieces together. You start getting the border together. You start putting the middle together. And then by the end, you have this whole song, you have this whole picture painted with the puzzle. And now you have that to cherish, keep in your house and just to have other people look at it and share it with you. So at the end of the day, just what is your creative process like when it comes to um, creating a song? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can write a song. I don't write a whole lot by myself anymore. I do every now and then keep my chops up and, you know, but I like to, you know, now that I've been writing for four or five years, I like to start an idea, have a melody, bring it into a write if I really like it. But if I don't have that, I guess I like to have an idea, a hook, um, something to write about, something to, to build the blocks around. And uh, that's normally, you know, how co-writing works here in Nashville is you get in a room, pitch ideas, whoever has the best idea or is it, I mean, if you want to write a sad song that day, a happy song that day, wherever, wherever it leads. I mean, for me, having an idea is probably the biggest thing and getting, you know, sometimes you get burnout out and you, for, you don't like for a while, you won't have an idea and you're like, man, like ha-. sometimes they'll just fall out in the room. You know, you'll start something, someone will say something, you'll there's a line that pops out and by the end of the song, you're like, this is what we're going to make it about. And it can, but usually having a hook, you know, like in my song, like seeing somebody else, my buddy had that hook and I like loved it. Like you hear it seeing somebody else, but really it's like in my mind, like I'm, I'm not seeing myself with you is really what it's saying. Not cheating. You're just saying, I just don't see it anymore, but it's like anything like that, just having a really catchy hook for me is what really drives me and like will get me creative in the room. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's just, it's always really cool just to hear, like I said, just to hear different people's perspective on how they come about writing a song. And especially with co-writes and stuff like that, it's just always really cool and unique because you might have like this line or two that might fit in the song that someone else already has is just waiting on those like other couple of lines. So it's just always really cool and special to see those kind of things come together. Exactly. You know, and you always got writing songs by yourself is really fun, but then having someone there to tell you, Hey, no, what about this? And it's better. You're like, Oh, okay. Let's exactly. No. And I mean, yeah. it's just crazy how things like that can come about. And it also gives you more experience because then sometimes you even pick up some more things. I mean, I know with some of the co-writes that I've done and stuff like that, it's just, it's crazy to learn different um, techniques on how to write a song and just how they form it and stuff like that. So it's just always a really, really cool and unique thing to learn about. Yeah, for sure. Um, kind of getting into the fourth question. It's always the hardest question. And I think I kind of talked about it before the interview started is it's, it's a very difficult question and people freeze up on it sometimes because at the end of the day, like, I know I have this, um, podcast series. I know I write music, but I'm still trying to work my craft and I'm still trying to figure out who I am. So, I mean, even if anyone ever asked me this question, I don't know if I'd be able to answer it, Yeah, but with so many artists out there, especially in country music, um, just up and coming and just trying to make a name for themselves. 
at the end of the day, just what makes you you? So what makes you stand out from all these other people? Like, and what can people take away from your music? And just at the end of the day, what makes Bryce Malden, Bryce Malden? Yeah, man. I mean, that is a hard question. Just, you know, finding your sound in Nashville is one of the hardest things to do because at the end of the day, a lot of things have already been done. A lot of songs have been written. A lot of uh, melodies have been done. A lot of different styles have been done. But I think for me, uh, I say I try to be vulnerable. I try I try to sing what I really feel in. Um, I believe what I'm singing, even if I'd never been there before. I still try to sell it and and be there. But I want to write songs that you know. I come from a little town, and I think that I write songs that people that come from places like I do can relate to my songs. I uh, I like to say the things that that most people wouldn't want to say. And I try to do that in my music and, uh, you know, whether it's they're out cracking a beer, having a good time, or they're in a really bad mood and just want to hear a sad song. I like to, uh, deliver all those different aspects of music. And, um, I don't know, a lot of people tell me I got a good tone. So I feel like I have a good tone. And, uh, other than that, there's a lot of talented people here in Nashville, but I feel like I also, you know, have shown myself, like I let people know who I am in my music and, I try to let them know as much about me as they can and, and just relate to my stuff. Right. No, exactly. And it's just, like I said, it's just always a unique question and obviously it's a hard one. So it's, I think that's why I lean towards it as being my favorite because yeah. sometimes it just makes people freeze up. And like at the end of the day, like I said, I don't even know if I could still answer that question because I still don't know what I'm doing. It's um, a great question. No, it is. It's honestly one of my favorites. And it's just yeah. crazy to think about too, because I mean, as much as I've been doing this music podcast and like I have that, um country music love is really don't think i think you're one of the only the handful of people that i've actually had to just like currently living in nashville so which is really? just like i yeah i've just thought about that i mean there's yeah shout out to noah hudson kyle um oh geez who else is down there? i don't think not a lot of other people down there but shout out to them obviously shout out to you because everyone yeah. else i feel like has been all around the world out in australia canada just all different places in the u.s too that's cool though yeah, yeah I mean, I've been, I was like, it's so crazy. Being in Nashville is just time flies. Like, I feel like I've been here for two years and then COVID took like two years from everyone. It feels like in music and I guess in life period. But Nashville is a it's a really cool place. And before you know it, a year has gone by for you know no. two years. I just no, continue. exactly. And that's just crazy. Um, and then obviously speaking of time and stuff that leads right into our next question is like what the future holds for you. Um, like what are your goals as an artist? Where do you want to go with your music and just what else can we expect down the road from you? Yeah. So, I mean, I got a lot of music, uh, that I'm ready to go into the studio and, and uh, record. Uh, I feel like this next, next, uh, few songs I'm going to release are going to be really, you know, fun to play live. I love what they say. And, uh, I'm trying to, trying to find my sound and, and develop that but I mean I'm gonna try and release as much music as I can this year uh get back in people's uh Spotify playlists and all that good stuff where it's been so long since I've released music it feels like but yeah just getting new music out get in front of fans that's my biggest thing I want to play shows that's probably my most favorite thing to do is sing and play shows and just give people that 90 minutes two hours to just let go and forget about everything else but no. uh yeah play shows release music and hopefully you know get my name out there even more and and continue to to build a fan base and and a brand no that's awesome man and i mean i've been a huge fan of yours ever since you started releasing music i mean it's just it's crazy all the song no of course it's crazy all the songs that you have i mean if i had to narrow one down if we're all talking about it all the proof I need I think that yeah. might be one of my favorites um obviously I'm a fan of summer song too that's always a jam to listen yeah. to and that's going to be jamming in the summertime for sure um yeah. but I'm just along for the ride with you man hopefully maybe at some point you would be up in Boston playing some shows or I'll be down in Nashville catching one of your shows at some point yeah you have to let me know when you're here uh, no absolutely actually this talks I might be heading down there in October or some point I might I'm also trying to come down in May too at some point so but I'll definitely let you know for sure well thank you for having me man
No, of course. I appreciate yeah. you just taking the time to do this. Um, before we go, obviously, my favorite part of the interview is hearing a song by you. Um, obviously, yeah. you're more than willing to play a song for us. So I'll kind of put myself on mute if you want to just let the people know what kind of song you're doing, how this song came about, and the floor's yours, man. Yeah, man. Do you want me to, I mean, should I do a released song or an unreleased one? That is totally up to you. I mean, if you want to spoil us with an unreleased song, that's up to you. Or if you want to play something that you want to promote more that you have out now, that's I'll yeah. leave, leave that up to you. I'll do a fun one. Uh, like I said, Jason Aldean's one of my uh, influences, so I'll do City Limits for y'all. <clears throat> um, yeah, so this song, I wrote a few years back with some buddies here in Nashville, and uh, like I said, I grew up in a little town called Webster in Central Florida, and we didn't have a whole lot to do except uh, just be crazy and push them city limits. So this is called City Limits. It goes like this. Awesome. No, that's awesome, man. I mean, that's such a great tune. Um, and it's just crazy um, how you said like that, Jason Aldean, like it's just I could totally hear him singing that, which is just like, yeah. that's, like a total like Jason Aldean vibe. And like I was just jamming to it. Obviously, I put myself on mute because if I start singing, then the windows will start cracking. <laughs> but um, uh, that was like that rock kind of fun to play live. Yeah, no, it's always fun to play live. And especially during the pandemic and stuff was it was hard to play live because obviously no one was going out. You couldn't go out. You had to stay in the house. And yeah. that's why I was hosting showcases for artists just to come on and just perform live, like on the internet, just for people, because yeah. there was not much else going on. Yeah, man, that's, that's awesome though. Like 
it's fun, it's good to be back playing shows and get in front of people exactly um so that kind of concludes everything for today um just real quick before i kind of do my little outro is just what are your social handles just so people know the um they can give you a follow yeah man uh my instagram is at bryce malden music my uh facebook is at bryce malden twitter bryce malden underscore and uh tiktok is bryce malden music perfect i mean everyone He's super, super talented, amazing singer songwriter, uh, Bryce Malden. Bryce, man, thank you again for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate you coming on. No, man, thank you for having me and thank y'all for listening. No, of course. Um, that concludes another episode of the Spotlight series, folks. Um, y'all know the drill at this point is every Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, um, new artist. Never know who it's going to be. So stay tuned and see y'all next week. <laughs>